gets curved and the object has no option but to travel in a curved line and looking at his curve path you are assuming that there is a force because there is acceleration. There is no, no force, nobody is attracting anybody. But you may ask, but why this mass has curved the space? Why this massive object has curved the space? The answer to this is that this is what the this is the definition of mass. You try to understand that we we do not know the definition of mass. Newton's law doesn't tell you what is mass. If I ask you what is the definition of mass, can anybody stand up and say the definition of mass? If you go through in your book, they will say the amount of matter in a body is mass. And then if you ask what is matter, then you say the amount of mass in a body. So this is a meaningless definition. So we do not know mass. For the first time in science, we understand what is mass. Mass which changes the geometry from flat to curved. And in a curved space, you have to travel in a curved, curved surface. So the acceleration is that natural, there is no force. So, presence of mass or energy curves the space time. The shortest distance is now a curved line giving an illusion of acceleration due to the existence of a gravitational force. So, illusion of force originates from curved geometry. So, this is a remarkable thing, and what Einstein did. So, Einstein said there is nothing called gravitational force, nobody is attracting anybody, but it is a manifestation of geometry. So, let me tell you very quickly. What does, what, what do I mean by this? Consider, you all of you, maybe some of you at least will be studying that if there are two points, distance between two points x, y, z and x plus dx, y plus dy, z plus dz, your coordinate geometry tells you the distance between them is this minus this whole square plus this minus this whole square plus this minus this whole square, which is this, which is essentially the Pythagoras theorem. But remember, this is violated in curve space. On a curve space, that hypotenuse square of a triangle, right angle triangle is not equal to base square and perpendicular square. It is violated in the curve space. So, this violation uh, can be explained in the following way. The distance between two points now becomes, instead of coefficient 1, 1, 1 here, dx square, dy square, dz square is coefficient 1, 1, 1. It becomes 1 plus some function, f1, dx squared, 1 plus f2, dy squared, and 1 plus f3, yes. So this is the new distance squared. So unless f1, f2, f3 are 0, that is space is flat, space is flat, if they are non-zero, the space is curved. So this is the mathematical understanding, this is the only equation I write. This is the mathematical understanding of a curved space. <coughs> so I have to check that if you are staying in a phase, check that the distance squared is 1, 1, 1 or this, there is some correction. So, these coefficients which measure the curvature, this f1, f2, f3, suppose, suppose they are measuring curvature like this and it is produced by a mass m. Now, suppose this starts, mass m starts moving. What will happen? The curvature, what was here like this, if the mass goes away, the curvature will be reduced a little bit. If the mass comes closer, the curvature will be more. So the curvature will start like behaving like this. So it will be, it will start behaving like this. So our space becomes surface of an ocean because of the motion of the mass, which is producing the curvature. Just as the electric charge, if you oscillate, the electric field changes. Here the mass which is producing the curvature, the curvature changes, the curvature is like nothing but the space curvature. So, this coefficient which measures the curvature can depend on time, as I said, they can time change with time, leading to fluctuations. And this propagate, this causes propagation of the space curvature like a wave. So, according to Einstein's theory, there has to be wave. The curvature measures the, replaces the gravity. So, let's see what it tells further. So, this is the space and you see the fluctuation in space. Our space, the space where you are sitting now in this auditorium. Okay. Einstein then wrote a 
famous equation where you wrote curvature in one side and mass in the other side. So if you put mass, the actual equation looks more complicated, but this is a very symbolic way of writing. If you put mass, this is a constant, so put mass in this, this is, space will be curved. If mass is zero, space will not be curved. So A measures fast. So mass energy curves the space time. R is non-zero if it is non-zero. Particle travels in a curved line, of course, then it, it is curves to travel a pattern. We imagine that there is a force. It's our imagination. There is nothing called force. And this subject, 100 years in, before in 1915, called general theory of relativity. After the proposal of this subject, Einstein says that space is like the surface of an ocean. The gravitational wave is the wave on this ocean. So, before exploring this wave, let me quickly tell you that this is the what this is the sun and it produces this curvature of space around the sun, and this is our earth, and this our earth is bound to move in a curved path, and Einstein used his equation to calculate the path of the planet, and he found that it is ellipse. So this is remarkable that we know that the planet moves in an elliptical path. So it is a fantastic success of Einstein's theory. And then Einstein showed that this ellipse, according to Newtonian gravitational force, which Newton proposed, this ellipse should be fixed in space. But according to Einstein, this ellipse, said so this is an ellipse, if after one year, this is one orbit, this is the second orbit, the second year, third year, that major axis of the ellipse is gradually tilting, which for Newtonian case will not happen. So there is now a clear statement by Einstein that you check that by space time curvature this ellipse is not fixed but the ellipse rotates. And it was experimentally tested from Einstein's theory. The angle of rotation for the planet, Mercury planet was 0 0.011 degree per century which was exactly same from experimental data. So we came to the conclusion that Einstein's description of curvature of space time is absolutely accurate because the planetary orbit rotates. Here I make one small statement that when Einstein was told about this, this is one of the first case in science where the theoretical prediction came first before experiment. When that telescope was built up and this was tested and people informed Einstein that your theory turned out to be right, Einstein made a very interesting statement. He said that thanks for letting me know that is right. But if it was not right, then I would have felt sorry for God. <laughs> so that was his level of confidence about his theory. But then, Einstein's theory then successfully explained many, many more phenomena in nature also predicted what is called the black hole. So what is a black hole? A black hole is a massive star which collapses to form a strange condition of space-time. As I said, Einstein theory tells you that when the mass and density increases, the space-time curvature are increases according to Einstein's theory. So what happens for black hole? What happens for black hole that such a, such a huge massive dense object that near it, when the star collapses to a very dense state, space-time around it becomes extremely curved that not even light can escape its pull, its curvature. I'll show you the that there is a distance from this. If light comes within this, then it will be completely swallowed in, nothing can escape. So it is called a black hole. And interestingly, this is the solution of Einstein's equation. And this is interestingly, evidence of existence of black holes at the center of our own galaxy puts Einstein's theory on strong footing. So we have discovered, we have got the indirect evidence that at the center of our galaxy we have a black hole. And Einstein's theory is absolutely successful in every prediction. So gravitational force is manifestation of space-time geometry. But then remained one black spot. What is where is gravitational wave? As predicted by Einstein. Just as movement of electric charge produces electromagnetic wave, as I explained, movement of mass should produce gravitational wave. According to Einstein, Movement of mass causes space curvature to fluctuate, as I have explained, as a surface of a sea which travels like a wave at a speed this. So if you take Einstein's theory 
and assume that the mass is moving solve Einstein's equation it is not difficult at all and we find that the curvature f1 f2 f3 f4 if you remember that was the measure of the curvature that I wrote f1 satisfies wave equation and that wave equation the velocity turns out to be speed of light so according to Einstein's theory there has to be gravitational wave so a theory is so successful otherwise is predicting this not detected. So this is the gravitational wave. Einstein confident, we are not, because where is that wave? But this wave actually is very hard to detect. Why? I have explained. Unlike electromagnetic wave, it is very, very difficult to detect this wave because it is very, very weak force. Gravitation is a very, very weak force. It's not easy. So unless you can produce a huge violent movement of space-time so that the gravitational wave amplitude is large it's not difficult, it's not possible to detect so if you think that I move this uh, move this laser pointer produces a wave, gravitational wave, yes absolutely right but that wave amplitude is terribly small, I mean it's impossible to detect it so something, something big thing is very very uh, weak unless unless some gigantic cosmic event takes place it is produced by collision of very massive bodies like violent stars two stars or black hole they merge into a single black hole and you can imagine the space time getting violently disrupted because they are heavy massive objects that can produce an amplitude which we should be able to detect through our detection so just as bigger collision produce more sounds in our daily life, you cannot hear this, but probably you can hear this. So bigger fluctuation of space-time produces large amplitude wave. Then the wave becomes the space starts behaving violently like this. This space. So this is a binary stars. So they are coming close to each other, and then the two black holes are gradually who are rotating around each other, then they are merging and hitting each other, producing huge ripples of gravitational waves being spread all over the But of course, we don't have a black hole very close to our, us, uh, our solar system. So if it, if it has to come from a very, very long distance. So, this detection system was created is the following that this is the usual interferometer with two mirrors. So what happens in the interferometer? A particular light is a beam splitter which produce split this light in two parts. So one travels one direction, one travels in the other, other direction. They get reflected from the mirror and they travel a certain path and they are superposed. When they are superposed, two waves, light waves, mind it is not gravitational wave, light waves they are superposed then they produce what is called interference pattern and if they are superposed constructively then they produce a large peak called bright uh, band and if they are destructively superposed they call it this produces a black spot so like this we can say that the, these are the two you know there are two mirrors so the light ray travels here here so this is laser and this is gravitational observatory Laser interferometer gravitational waves observatory. So we sent electromagnetic wave lasers and then they are superposed. It's a usual interferometer where the path difference between, between these two arms will produce interference pattern. But light rays reflected from two mirrors are superposed to produce interference result depends on the difference of path traveled by the two rays so let me explain that see if one path ray and another ray the path difference is such that one crest is, meets another crest then it becomes large amplitude it's a constructive interference but in other case one crest is meeting the other trough so they destroy it becomes a flat dark black, black. So, so this is done in interferometer, we all know. 
But according to Einstein, the distance traveled by each light ray will depend on the curvature of space. Because I told you that the distance when this space was flat, this, this distance is now changing if the space is, gets curved. So, if the interferometer suddenly a gravitational wave arrives with energy, it produces a curvature. And that curvature will change the path of light uh, which, the, which is being traveled in the, inside the interferometer. So, what, what is possible is that these two light which was traveling has a path difference such that there is a constructive interference. Suddenly, the gravitational wave arrives and changes the path of this light such that the path difference becomes destructively different. So, see the path in absence of any curvature, straight line. Now the same path, see, because of this, this produce produces a curvature, same path is this bigger. So space curvature changes when a gravitational wave arrives. So gravitational wave arrives. This results in the change of length of path traveled by light in interferometer. So the change there will be path traveled that this length will change and this leads to a change in the interference pattern. So what they have done in two cities, Livingstone and Hancock, there are two such detectors. So suppose from a far distance, some gigantic events take place and gravitational wave is emitted. It reaches one detector, produces a disturbance and then it after some time it reaches the other detector and the distance between the two places are about 3000 km within US and they measure the time difference of that uh, uh, disturbance in the interference meter. So in one case it is say now and in the other case it is after time delta t. And the distance by delta t they measured is equal to speed of light. So the light, this wave is traveling with speed of light. It's not for some other reason, other local disturbance. For this reason, they have kept two detectors. Because with one detector, it can it may be caused by something else. So, see, without gravitational wave, they have exactly killing each other. Crest and trough are pretty, so it's a black spot. But now, after arrival of the gravitational wave, it is shifted, path difference has changed. So it has produced a finite jump in the interference pattern. You can see this was detected on 14 September 2015, the great occasion that this is the living stone, there is a handful, the suddenly see the fluctuation in the interference pattern. Both of them, after a short time difference. And that time difference, the distance between them and the time difference equal to speed of light. So I'll this okay, I'll tell you about this. Uh, this is the voice of the universe because the frequency of this this is a very large wavelength uh, wave and the frequency you can uh, it's interesting the frequency is so sm uh, small that it is nearly I don't know many of you have heard your you know, play harmonium or any musical instrument the middle C what you call SA the middle SA is the frequency 261 and this has frequency around 250. So it's an audible wave. So what you are hearing is hearing the sound that was created because of the collision of that. So it has been detected in both the places, Hanford and Livingstone, distance 3000 km at a time difference, which confirmed that the speed of gravitational wave is this. So using the 3D sky mapping technique, so you may say that how do I know how far it has taken place? The rule is the following. Suppose I am receiving some signal along this line, okay? I really don't know from where it is created, right? Because it can be anywhere. But suppose I put another detector here. He is measuring from this. Now I can extend the two line where it meets. This is called sky mapping. So this way we map the 3D sky to locate the origin of this wave. So using 3D sky mapping technique, 
which has been found that two black holes of mass approximately because measuring the amplitude, I know how far that amplitude will fall by traveling this distance. Everything is known. 30 solar mass rotating about each other eventually collided and merged into a single black hole about 1.3 billion years ago. Imagine the sound that you are hearing today was produced 1.3 billion years before. 1.3 into 10 to the power 9 years before. The sound has reached us now. Why? Because it is traveling at the speed of light. So, resulting gravitational wave reaches us now. We can detect when the frequency of the gravitational wave reach around this hertz. So we have now reached it because we need this amount of frequency, this amount of amplitude and frequency to measure the gravitational wave. This is the frequency of our musical note in middle C, which is 261. So we have detected this wave. So this is the two black hole marsh producing this wave, which has finally reached us after 1.3 billion years. So footprints of cosmic event. The resulting sound is the musical voice of the cosmos. I'll just tell you one last thing. That what is the future? The future is we know that galaxy contains many, many stars. And Einstein showed that if you consider the distance between two galaxies as some quantity A, then if you apply Einstein's equation, you find that this distance between the galaxies is changing, that is the galaxies are going away from each other. This has been tested experimentally by this person Hubble, who showed that our universe is expanding, the galaxies are going away. So if you go back in time, when all galaxies were at a point, the distance between all the galaxies were zero, the whole universe started from a point because of a huge explosion or big bang. And Einstein theory calculates that this is around 14 billion years before. It's a large number, but it's a finite number, isn't it? So 14 billion years before the universe was a point, and it started from a huge explosion like this. And that energy finally resulted into all the masses that you see. You, me, and everyone. At that time, there was a heat wave which was emitted. That heat wave. I'm doing something wrong here, bro. Thanks. That heat wave. Uh, that heat wave was approximately three degree Kelvin temperature. Now, still should be there as a footprint of electromagnetic wave at the time of Big Bang which was found by this person in 1965, got the Nobel Prize for this. They measured this primordial Big Bang electromagnetic wave and Big Bang theory was established. Our question is that the energy release at the Big Bang gave rise to gravitational wave also. Where is that gravitational wave? So this is that primordial gravitational wave which we search can we detect this primordial gravitational wave created at the time of Big Bang to hear the birth cry of our universe? That is the moment the universe exploded. This is our next search to find that primordial gravitational wave. But then I tell you something which may change our idea completely. This is my last slide where gravitational wave can it be our new mode of communication in coming years? It's a new emergence of a new era because with the improvement in technology, now we can detect gravitational wave. Suppose we have now a mobile device where we can detect gravitational waves. Now for electromagnetic wave, you need charge, electric charges. But for gravitation, it you need only mass and energy, which is there everywhere. Even for neutral body, there is a mass and energy. So it creates gravitational wave. So suppose I create this gravitational wave, it reaches you. Suppose you have a smart detector which detects this. So maybe today we are talking this 500 years since for 500 years from now, the entire mode of communication will be gravitational wave. So what Einstein has taught us that we can have a new mode of communication other than electromagnetic wave, this gravitational wave. And we have detected that. Till date we couldn't find that. So this is a remarkable thing. The only thing that, so this is the final success after 100 years. I will do one thing uh, for you. I, I got a, many of you may have heard, but I got a record of the sound of the wave. Now, let's verify it. 
and you still find the tough and stuff answer to you. Okay, thank you.